hear now the promises of God. God is near to all who call, who call from their hearts. The desires of those who fear God are fulfilled. Their cries are heard. They are saved. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. All who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Friends, we gather here this afternoon in the protective shelter of God's healing love. We are free here and now to experience, to feel, to pour out grief, anger, emptiness, and all the while to know that God cares. We gather here as God's people, conscious of others who have died and of the frailty of our own existence on earth. We come to comfort and support one another in our common loss. We gather to hear God's word of hope that can drive away our despair and move us to offer God even our thanksgiving and praise. We gather to commend to God with thanksgiving the life of Gary Frank Salmon as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection. For whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Christ, who is Lord both of the dead and of the living. And let us pray. Almighty God, you offer, you love us with an everlasting love and can turn the shadow of death into the light of the morning. We ask that you be with the family and friends of Gary Seven. Be our strength and shield. Help us now to listen for your word with reverent and believing hearts in the silence of this moment. Speak to us of eternal things, that through patience and the comfort of scriptures, we may have vision and be lifted into the light and peace of your presence.
through him who died and rose again and ever lives with you, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 23 is printed in our bulletins. This is a psalm of comfort and strength. Let us recite Psalm 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How appropriate to read from the Word of God in 1 Corinthians in the 13th chapter, the first eight verses. If I speak in tongues of human beings and of angels, but I don't have love, I'm a clanging gong or a clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I know all the mysteries and everything else, and if I have such complete faith that I can move mountains, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give away everything that I have and hand over my own body, feel good about what I've done, but I don't have love, I receive no benefit whatsoever. Love is patient. Love is kind. It isn't jealous. It doesn't brag. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It doesn't seek its own advantage. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep a record of complaints. It isn't happy with injustice, but it is happy with the truth. Love puts up with all things, trusts in all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. Love never fails. What an extraordinary human being. Gary Samuel was a son, a brother, a husband, a church member, a hard worker fighting forest fires all over the country, working with young people, tirelessly advocating, as has been said many times, speaking for the trees, but also for the humans, in so many other selfless ways. Sportsman, as participant on and off the field, cheering especially for Syracuse teams. Rutland Fair stalwart and carefully observant photographer and generous sharer of photos. Gary taught, served in the military, made remarkable calendars as gifts for dozens of friends, built things with his own hands, supported people in countless substantive ways, wrote columns people waited for it read first. Gary had this vast knowledge, expertise, and memory, and shared all of it with such tireless generosity of spirit, wanting to make things better for everyone for generations to come, any way that he could. And oh, by the way, he sang. <laughs> Gary loved and shared music from a deep place in his spirit. Gary Salmon was and remains astounding. He is a gift to all of us, to Grace Church, to the community, to Vermont, to the world, and most intimately to his family and to those whom he loved. Thinking of Gary and all he gave and all he did, and all he was, the question that comes up is, 
who is going to be that? Who is going to step up and give to the world what he was and what he did for us? We're here to give heartfelt thanks to God for all that Gary has been and done. This is a celebration of his life and times, but we don't deny that this is a loss on so many levels. What do we do now? There's no easy answers, of course. But there are some first steps. One of the first things we can do is love and embrace and be church and family and community for Marjorie, for Judy, and Michael, and the family. And we know on some level that healing from our own sadness and loss is so great, greatly enhanced and enlivened by acting on our intentions to stand by them and love them as they need in the days ahead. Not expecting in a couple weeks that everybody should be back to normal, not giving in to our anxiety when we don't quite know how to talk about it, not putting off or forgetting to check in with them, but instead making an effort to walk the journey with them when we can, as best we can. And it is a journey. We remember that grieving is a process with a beginning and phases and stages and seasons and the hope eventually of a becoming, the hope of a new vista where we are mostly healed from the intensity of the pain and we realize we are better because of the gift of Gary when he was standing next to us, because of the ways we carry him in who we are now, and we are even better because we have known loss and have held on to love and been held on to by God and each other along the journey. We don't really get a choice about entering this process. If we love, we will have loss. This is a day that we would not sign up for if we could get around it. This is a service we don't want to be at. But we don't have a choice about entering the grieving process. What we do get to decide is how we will participate in the journey, how fully we will engage with the sacred process of grief and healing from loss. It is a process, and it's never quite finished. It has harder days and better days, and all of the days benefit from people coming alongside and sticking together. Marjorie, and family, and friends, you will not feel the same a year from now as you do today. And there will be some moments when that is very important to know and remember. You won't always feel like this. But today, and each of the days moving forward, are very important. Every day on this journey has a healing component and meaning and purpose. And your church loves you. Gary's church loves you. And will be with you through this healing process. So part of what we do now is love and support and pray for and hold on to Marjorie and Judy and Mike and extended family. Another part of what we do now is hold on to each other, right? Because the loss to us, to the choir and the church and all of the gazillion constituent communities Gary fed with his energy and his very being will need to find ways, large and small, to take care of each other without him. We need to steady each other, put a hand on each other, or an arm around each other, and remember together. Laugh, cry, sing, and sing some more. Plant some trees, and volunteer to spruce up some trails. Teach somebody something of value and sustainability. Love somebody who needs it. And I suppose, cheer for the orange, right? <laughs> this may be my mantra, but I'm not the only one 
who would remind us that we don't just lose Gary with all he meant and means to so many. We don't just lose Gary Sam. Now and for generations, we take him with us, living forward, remembering and honoring and carrying the gifts of his goodness and care and knowledge and work and concern for the earth. We take him with us. We don't just not have him Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings, that's true, and that loss matters. But now we have Gary with us and in our midst as part of us and as part of all the music that happens and all the forests that wave gently in the spring breeze, as part of all the engagement we can muster with our communities and our responsibilities to the natural environment preservation and enhancement of natural resources, wherever we are alive and stepping up to what it means to be our best selves, we've got Gary with us in ways that are as deep and formidable and permanent as a mighty oak tree. I can imagine this afternoon that Gary would say to us, love each other, Take care of the earth from whence we came and to which we will return. Walk faithfully the journey of healing together. And I can imagine this afternoon us saying to Gary, we are so much better for having you with us, as you were then and as you are now. For all of this, thanks be to God who made us who loves us, who holds us. Amen.
a few words that he would like to share. Come on up, Mike. And I also want to mention that after the service, we will continue to celebrate Gary in the fellowship hall with refreshments and with opportunities for folks to share stories and memories and good things. I think there'll be uh, even some slides, and I hope that you'll come and join us for that. I first met Gary 47 years ago, shortly after my wife and I were engaged. He came to Watertown, where his, where his hometown. I said, man, I met this guy. I said, he's fantastic. We had common interests. He was so outgoing, you couldn't help but fall in love with this guy. And 35 years ago, I said, Gary, how about we take a bike trip across the Adirondacks? Doesn't that sound great? And he said, sure. And I think he was challenging me, and I was sort of challenging him. So for three days, we rode our bicycles across the Adirondacks. It was a great challenge. It was a great achievement. And I really thank him for accompanying me, because I probably wouldn't have done it by myself. And I'm sure I helped him get to where he did at the end of the trip. And that was so meaningful. I just, I, you know, it was fantastic. One of the best things the two of us had ever done. And we grew close, closer together right after that also. And I considered Gary a brother rather than a brother-in-law, which meant so much, to me, so much to me. And for the last three years, Judy and I called Gary every night after he had his heart attack to get even closer. And he's in our hearts forever. We'll always remember that. Thank you. Also printed in our bulletin is an affirmation of faith. It is adapted from Romans 8, and I invite you, as you are willing, as you are able, to read these words, to lift these words up together. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we know that in everything, God works for good with those who love God who are called according to God's purpose. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus.
Let us take a moment of silence and then I will lead us in prayer. God of all mercies and all comfort, in tender love and compassion, embrace your sorrowing servants. Be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Show us again the love of Christ that passes all human understanding, for by death Christ has conquered death, and by rising Christ has opened to all of us the gates of everlasting life. Thanks be to you, O God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for the prayer of commendation. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Gary Salmon. Acknowledged, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a son of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of the saints in light. Amen. <laughs> 